thank you for joining me. Hope you're all well. My name is Alan and today's video is how do you know that you have enough preps? Stay with me. So as in all things in life, you need to have a plan and you need to set yourself a realistic target. <clears throat> you could be potentially be someone that's very new to prepping or someone that's been doing it for a considerable amount of time. But you do really still need a plan to start with and to set yourself a target. Be it that you're gonna have initially an extra two weeks of preps, food, etc. And then your next target may be a month, two months, three months, six months, 12 months, and so on. But how do you know how much you actually need? And that's the purpose of this video, is to try and get you to, to think about that and to share your comments on how you've overcome these problems. And in turn, that helps everyone else. And it could be as simple as, so for instance, pasta, or rice, porridge oats. I'm gonna stick on those three because they're relatively easy to do. A cup, yeah, of measuring one cup of pasta per person for a meal. Same for rice, same for porridge. You have to make that decision and say, well, no, one cup of porridge in the morning is not enough for me. I need two. But you need to think about it, and that's your plan. Then you decide how many, how many people you've got within your family. So you then need to multiply that amount by the number of people in your family to give you a baseline. And that's the sort of mentality that I think you need to have. And it can be boring, it's not sexy, it's not survival kits and knives and camping in the woods. It's probably more important than those aspects of survival and prepping. So work out how many servings your family need of a particular item. And then that will give you an idea of what you're looking at ultimately to purchase to get you through a period of time by using those preps. The big adage is, you know, store what you eat, eat what you store is good, but I've touched on it before. It doesn't always work. It doesn't work for me or for the good lady because a lot of the food that we actually eat on a day-to-day -day basis is not necessarily food that we can store for a long period of time and if you take into the equation the possibility of a loss of electricity or mains so freezers you know they're not going to stay frozen for an indefinite period of time then that would vastly affect our food stocks so we have to supplement with dry foods such as rice and pasta though pasta is not too bad rice to be fair I have quite a few kilos of rice stored, but it isn't something that we eat a lot of. We'll have the packet rice, you know, the pre-cooked stuff, you just nuke it or boil it in the bag. That's our go-to. We both work, get home from work, don't necessarily want to faff about cooking stuff that's going to take longer to prepare, etc. But you've got to have something as that emergency blanket, you know, for you to fall back on. It's the same with tins. You might not eat a lot of tinned food, but you still need to have a stock of tinned food to get you over however long uh, the incident of the drama takes. I know in the past people have said, oh, I'm guilty of it, you buy stuff, it goes in the cupboard, it goes well past its you know, best before date, which to be fair isn't necessarily a problem the way we're thinking about it now. But the time when we look at it, you look at that amount of food, you think, oh, all that money's wasted. But just think about this for a minute. If you have a breakdown service for your vehicle, 
and if you have building insurance and contents insurance. Every year that they come up for renewal, and let's face it, everything is expensive at this time, you know, at this moment in time, but every time that comes up for renewal, if you haven't used it, you can say, well, that's a complete waste of money. The good lady's been a member of the AA, the yeah, Recovery, for nine and 30 years. She's used it twice. So if you think, if you're giving someone 100 pound a year for 30 years, yeah, and she's used it twice, maybe for relatively minor things. But you see where I'm coming from? So it's easy to say, oh, I've got a stack of food there, all the tins are out of date, what a waste, blah, blah, blah. But so is everything else in this world. Your insurance is that, you know, it comes up renewing, your household insurance comes up for renewing, you're thinking, oh, 250 quid, I never, I never made a claim on it. So that's money that went down a swanny. But if you did need it, then it's not waste, is it? And that, I think, is the mentality you've got to have with your food. If you are really that anal that you don't want to keep food once it goes past its best before date, yeah, not used by date, best before date, then if you're on top of it, on top of your inventory and you know what you've got, then consider donating it all to a food bank whilst there's still some, you know, best before time on it. If there isn't a lot, doesn't matter. Donate it to a food bank and then go and buy it again if you're really that bothered. But for the majority of tinned food, it can last well past its best before date. And it's the usual, isn't it? If you've got one that's past the best before date, make sure the tin's not bloated. You open it, you're gonna sniff it. If it smells rancid or if you've got this mold on it, you're not gonna eat it. But if, it, if you open it and it looks fine, and you stick your finger in it and give it a lick and it tastes fine, then chances are it is fine and then you can eat that. But you need to have that safety blanket. So, work out how much you would actually eat with the tins, if it's a large tin, you know, 420 gram tin of baked beans. If you're having that as part of a meal or something else, then you're only gonna really have half of that tin and then you'll get another tin and you'll have half of that. So you can work out how many tins of something you're gonna require for X amount of people for X amount of time. And that's something that you need to, to consider. Don't just go out and buy 48 tins of lentil soup. If you don't like lentil soup, that would be a complete waste. Yeah, so plan what you're going to do. And it, it will potentially will save you money because that really will. If you're buying stuff that makes you heave when you eat it, then that is really a waste. Medical stuff. Make sure that you've got a comprehensive first aid kit. Make sure you've got over-the-counter medication. Your painkillers, uh, anti-diarrhea tablets, go the other way, something like Senecop, so if you are bunged up, it will help you go. And look at home, uh, own brand. If you actually go to, you know, you go down to the supermarket, you go up to the shelf and you get, I don't know, a top brand packet, say anti-diarrhea tablets, and then you look at the own brand. If you turn them over and look at the active ingredients and the percentage, nine times out of ten it'll be exactly the same. It saves you money, but you've got it, but you need to have a good stock. Same as plasters, bandages, that sort of stuff. They're gonna have a use-by date on them, but to be fair. For a lot of items, providing it's not damaged, it's been stored correctly, it's going to be fine, with the exception of perhaps plasters. In the past, I've found plasters that I've had for donkey's years and I go to use it, the adhesives and that because that keeps falling off. But for things like bandages, there is no reason that you have to keep binning them each time it comes up to the use by date, unless, of course, it's damaged. So that's your medical side. Health and hygiene. How do you work out how many tubes of toothpaste your family goes through in a, a month or whatever? Same as toilet paper. And there is an easy solution for those two items. And it will work on other items, shower gel, shampoo, and all the other stuff that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. 
and that is take a Sharpie pen and write on it. So with toilet roll, you can just put the date, write it on the inside of the cardboard tube. Anything else that you use, your shampoos, everything else, toothpaste, do exactly the same. And then if you can recover that as it's been thrown in the bin, if that's one of your jobs that you have to go around when it's bin bay and empty all your little bins in different rooms, you can have a look. And it will give you an indication of how frequently you go for an item. And again, by having that information, you can then plan on how many you are going to need to cover you for X amount of time. Things like toilet paper though, just be aware, if, if you're a household, if, if you're working full time, then you won't get a realistic uh, figure on its use. Because if you're, you know, if there's two of you, for instance, and you both go out to work, and chances are you'll be using the toilets at work, you won't be using at home, them at home, so you're gonna get a false figure with that. And especially with children, if they're at school, yeah. So an ideal time to try and do that is during holiday times, especially when the kids are off for six weeks, school holiday, that will give you more of an indication on how long a roll of toilet paper will last when your household has its full quota and people are using your loo more frequently than they would at any other time. But it gives you a baseline figure. So you then know that your tube of toothpaste is lasting one tube per month. And I've just grabbed that figure out of the air. So if you want a year's supply of toothpaste, then it's 12 tubes of toothpaste. So that's what I'm saying, right? you've got to have a plan, you've got to do a little bit of the work and work out how long this stuff actually lasts. In a grid dance scenario, we've got no electric, candles and batteries. You can find out how long things will work. Usually the manufacturers will actually tell you, so a tea light for instance, it might say it's a four hour burn time for one tea light. So that gives you an idea, it gives you, it might not be precise, but it gives you something to work with. So you can work out perhaps how many candles you need. If you've got a 40 hour, a 40 hour candle, you know that candle's gonna burn for approximately 40 hours. Yeah, so it, you can plan on how many you need. Same as batteries, lanterns and torches usually come advertised with a runtime on there, just to give you an indication. So it'll give you an idea of actually what you need to get. Cooking, if your gas or your electric went off for, you know, for a period of time at your home and you're going to be using a, a little gas cooker for instance, one of the little bistro types that takes the uh, 250 size canisters. On the, thank you Amazon, uh, on the internet you can research that and it will tell you roughly how long one of those cartridges will last. And you can then plan on how many you're going to need to see you through X amount of time. Water, that's a difficult one to do because of the size, you know, so it's a litre of water and the weight, you know, 2.2, uh, sorry, it's a kilo, isn't it? 2.2 pound for one litre of water. And if you're looking at four to five litres per person per day, you can imagine you need the storage space of an Olympic sized swimming pool if you're drinking water to last you for X amount of time. By all means, have some emergency water, some water that's at hand for short term problems, but then you need to look at ways for longer term periods that you can actually treat the water. And I'm gonna say for the bulk of us, that would be, or most certainly in my circumstances, it's gonna be harvesting rainwater. We've got a number of water butts, I've got stored water, I've got about 160 litres in the garage stored uh, of tap water. We've got some bottled water under the stairs, etc. We've got one, two, four water butts around the garden and they're pretty much full all the time. It won't last 12 months, it wouldn't last six months. But we would need a way to, to make that safe. And you've got little things like the soyers, which are fine, but if you've got a family of four and a soy mini, that's going to be hard work. 
So you perhaps you need to look at something that's a little bit more suitable for your home base setup. Now I've got a British Bergfeld uh, with the ceramic filters in there. It's only got, there's only two of us, so it's a six litre capacity storage tank on it, but that's fine. They're six months of use with the two uh, ceramic filters that are in there. I've got some spare filters, so if you come to that, that's 12 months worth of filtering, rainwater, etc. But you need to think of, along those lines, how you're going to treat water. Because let's face it, no water you die, simple as that. So you need to be able to treat it. And the soil is good, surviving straws are good, but if you're looking at day-to-day -day water supply, filtering it for a soil, it's going to be a pain in the ass. You're not going to want to do that. You need something that can deal with large quantities of water. Then we've got miscellaneous items. And this will be simple things like DIY stuff. It would be an assortment of screws and nails, and that's going to be harder to quantify how many you would need. But it would be prudent to have a selection of it. Some reels of duct tape, that sort of stuff. You're going to need them but it's much harder to quantify the quantities that you're going to actually need. But you do, going back to the beginning, you need to have a plan and targets that you're going to aim to. I hope you haven't fallen asleep, and that's not a particularly sexy subject, but if you don't plan, you're setting yourself up for a fall. Dread to think you've got enough tinned food to last you and your family for six months, but you've only got one tin opener and it breaks. Enjoy your weekend. If you found the video useful, then consider a thumbs up for me. Love to read your comment. How have you, have you got a system in place that you keep on top of your prep and your plan on how you make sure that that's maintained? And of course, if you find this content interesting, then consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything. It gives me a little warm, fuzzy feeling. Uh, and it ensures that I try and put content out there to help. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Thank you.